Dennis, and then uh, Bill Coleman, which is uh, on the uh, ICC side, who's going to give us a little overview of the of, of, of the pro program itself. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the zoning changes that were presented last week from the alderman's office. And then uh, we'll talk about some board nominations and just kind of what goes in, what goes in, in, into that. We're, we're looking for a couple, a couple new people to fill some spots. Um, so we're hoping you'll consider, you'll consider that. So uh, I'll give people another minute here to start. And then we can uh, kick things off. Oh, I see some of the steering committee members for Illinois Connected Communities. America, hi, dude. I, I we've never met before, but uh, it's exciting. And Servan and others, Liliana, awesome. Thanks everybody uh, for jumping aboard. And and the uh, we just started doing some outreach and onboarding folks for Illinois Connected Communities. I see Allison is there. Awesome. Um, and uh, you know, really appreciate you guys hopping on board the call. Oh, there's Roy. Hey, Roy. All right. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Just a couple things. You know, I've got you guys all on, on mute, but if, you know, if anytime you guys have any questions, uh, you feel free to raise, you know, raise your hand. There's a little function on, on the bottom there. If you click uh, participants, it's, you know, you should have the option to raise your hand. You can um, type in the chat, just raise your hand on the screen, kind of whatever you want to do. Um, where, uh, where me, Liz and Justin will, will be kind of monitoring that and we'll, uh, you know, un unmute you guys if you have questions, there'll be plenty of opportunities for that. Um, I want to thank you all for, you know, taking the time out of your evening to come and listen to us. I know it's been a little while since we, since we last met, we've sort of worked out most, most of the kinks, hopefully. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. So we'll, uh, but we're excited to talk about a couple new, a uh, bunch of new things that are going on in the neighborhood, new things that we're um, taking part in. And uh, yeah, so why don't we go ahead and um, I'm gonna introduce Alex. Do you go by Alex Keefe or Al Keefe? Uh, you can call me Al. Okay, uh, Al is with WBEZ and a few weeks ago, we sort we collaborated on um, what the best way for people to get and correct correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, the yeah, best yeah. way for people to get information about the local about the elections com com coming up and in kind of um, uh, you know who's in charge of what and in, in kind of their whole domain. So yeah. before I go and butcher it, I'm gonna let you. No, no, no. Explain it. Yeah, yeah, you're totally. You're totally on the right track. So I'm I'm Al. I'm uh, I'm the pol I'm one of the politics editors at WBEZ. So we oversee a team of uh, eight reporters who cover city, state, and Cook County government and politics, which is, uh, as you might guess, a busy beat from time to time in Chicago. Um, we also cover a lot of corruption in the courts, which is sort of part and parcel with this beat. Um, but we created this thing called the Citizens Agenda to give a thumbnail um, a little while ago to address the elections and also this part of the project actually is more sort of educating people about how their government works. Um, I've been working in, you know, here I imagine if you're on this call, you're probably a pretty plugged in citizen. Um, you care enough to be here tonight, you care enough to be interested in this. Um, but, you know, I've covered government and politics in Chicago and Illinois for uh, on and off for 13 years and one of the main things I've taken away is that a lot of people just don't know how their government actually works and who's in charge of what and sometimes it's about education sometimes it's because it's like a really confusing process that is maybe confusing by design and hard to navigate so what we did with the citizens agenda is we basically started asking our audience and people around chicago what do you want your elected officials to be talking about what do you want your government officials to be talking about like what issues matter to you and we've been building some different um, stories and tools all around that. Um, so one of the things I wanted to show you tonight was the field guide, which is sort of like less, less like an election guide and more sort of a primer on local government. And it's we hope it's something that we're going to be adding to and building on as we go along. So let me see if I could not muck this up and actually share my screen successfully. What screen do I want to share? Oh, 2020. Zoom. Try this. 
Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, I see you're sharing a screen. There we go. There we go. So um, if you could see this, okay, tell me if you can. And if anybody has questions or anything, please just raise your hand really quick. So basically what we did is we asked people what they what they care about, you know? Um, we had the top, top issues we got from all around the city were unsurprisingly about COVID, about how to control the pandemic, about how to get the economy back on track, a lot of stuff about police reform, a lot of stuff about education funding. So we took the issues that people care most about and we've done some reporting on them in terms of just like deep dive um, investigative reporting. One of the examples I could share with you all is uh, one we did about safety net hospitals. So safety net hospitals are hospitals that serve mostly low income people, disabled people, um, a lot of people in color, particularly on the south and west sides in Chicago. Um, so we looked into like the obstacles to getting safety net funding in Chicago when like who has control over that? Who can, who can, who can change how much those hospitals do get money and what the obstacles are to that? I'm trying to find a chat here so I can share it with you. I do not find, there it is. Uh, here's the link to that story, by the way. Um, and one of the things we did is we created this field guide. So the field guide took some of the things that people ask most frequently. And we said, you know, okay, what if we can create these little primers on how government works and teach people about issues, teach people who's in charge of those issues, who has the authority to change policy in them, and then sort of give people contact information so they could reach out to them. So for example, if you were to type in your address here on this site, and I'll, I think, um, John, I think you had the link in your agenda, right? I believe I do. Let me, let me draw, I'll drop it in this chat channel too, just for grins, belts and suspenders, right? Uh, there we go. Um, you can type in your address. It has to be a residential address because Google creepily knows what's a residential address and what's not a residential address, which is a little disturbing. Um, but basically you type in your address and it will auto populate who your elected officials are for the most part. Um, so here, for example, you know, one of the things we got a lot about was questions about funding for the Chicago Police Department, especially as more people are talking about quote unquote defunding police in America. So this is a little blurb that shows you who is in charge, who has authority over this issue. You know, here are the main people. You know, if you, based on the address I put in, this is this would be the alderman for that address. And then we sort of like gave bullet points that are sort of like a little bit of a primer on this issue. Things you need to know, special context um, and history of it, explaining exactly how all of these people have authority over this stuff. Um, and then also sort of like some policies and ideas that are on the table to change this issue. And then here, down here, if you can see that, we have contact information to the relevant people we named up here who actually have authority over this. So right now we only have about nine or 10 entries in this body. Um, it talks about uh, police reform. It talks about um, public school money in here. It also tags if you have an elected official up for reelection right here, it'll auto populate to say, hey, this person who you put it in your address is gonna be on the ballot soon. Um, let's see, what other ones do we have here? Vote by mail system was a big question about voting security this year. Uh, police deployment. Um, got a lot of questions about rats. A lot of people have problems with rats. Uh, so we're actually gonna be making a rat widget tomorrow, I think. So what we hope is that this is a thing that grows as we report on these issues. Um, and we also, as you could see here today, this was, we had just fixed this and then it broke. So of course it's not gonna work now that I have to present it to someone, but. Oh, here it is. So also what we're gonna do at BEZ and, and maybe with some partnering with some other organizations in the city is we made these widgets that you can embed in our news stories. So if you read a news story, say about the city budget, this is just presented today. Um, one of the things that the mayor talked a lot about was funding for police and defunding police and how she doesn't support this. So at the bottom, we auto populated our widget here. So the idea is, I see, then it just disappeared. All right, well, it worked a second ago. Wonderful, thank you technology. Um, I'm so over 2020 right now. <laughs> um, but the idea is based on the news stories, like, you know, if you're reading something about defunding, one of our primers automatically drops into the bottom. So you could say, hey, you could learn a little bit about background on this issue. And here's how you could take some steps to reach out to the officials, or in some cases, the organizations that have a say in funding for this. Um, so that's the basic gist. I'll stop sharing now. How do you stop sharing? No, I don't want I am screen sharing, stop sharing.
There we go. So that's the basic gist of how the widget works. Um, it's something that it's something that, uh, like I said, we're going to be adding to and something that's going to be driving a lot of our reporting beyond the election. But really, that's just one piece of a larger project that's all about listening to what our audiences are wanting in terms of, you know, deep journalism right now in 2020, because we're kind of all in this weird year together. And our thinking is like, let's get you some answers. Let's get you some accountability to elected officials. Um, we're also doing some town hall events around the city and uh, some other investigations coming up after the election too. So, um, hi, Rennie, Rainey, Miles, did we get special funding to do this? No, we did not. We applied for some special funding, but um, this is just sort of part of our election political coverage right now. Um, I've been really into what we call audience engagement journalism for much of my career. Basically, it's the wild idea that we should be listening to what our audiences want us to be reporting on, which is pretty crazy, I know, um, but a lot of journalism doesn't really do that. So um, this was just something that I, I think this year when we were thinking about the pandemic, um, we were like, how can we be doing something that helps people and helps them understand what's going on, especially to learn more about their government coming up on a really critical time. So this is one of the tools we built, um, you know, in addition to a bunch of other stuff. So anyway, I'll stop yakking. I've had a bunch of coffee late in the day because I'm still working on this budget stuff, but I'm happy to answer any questions or, you know, any, any other general stuff that you all have. And also, um, I can, I'll drop my email in the chat and if people have, you know, questions later or something you think of, I'd be more than happy to, to talk to folks. Anybody have any questions for Al? Al, is this is I'm, I'm assuming this is a this is going to be a, per, a perpetual or semi perpetual thing that WBEZ is just, just going to maintain. Yeah, this is something like we're adding to as we go on and we get more responses from people. Um, okay. We're also partnering with City Bureau, um, which I don't know if, if people are familiar with that. It's another news news outlet that does a lot of work. I think I think they do have some pretty good relationships on the south side. Um, and we've been partnering with different community organizations around the city. But yeah, I mean, the idea is as we build more, like hopefully we can have a good glossary that's a body of these entries that show people like, hey, this is how your government works. You know, I mean, I don't know how many times as a reporter, I got somebody saying like, well, I got to call Dick Durbin because uh, my property taxes are too high. And it's like, well, wait a minute, Dick Durbin has nothing to do with your property taxes. I mean, that's that's a totally different, that's somebody else, right? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a number of bodies and then it's a bunch of like bureaucrats downtown who you've never heard of and whose names you'll never find. Um, so kind of our goal is to like empower people to make, we've been saying to, we want to empower people to make informed civic action. Like that could mean voting. That could also mean knowing where to go to solve a problem you have with the city. That could also mean getting involved somehow in your neighborhood or reaching out to an organization that's trying to change policy on something. You know, there's an old yarn in political reporting, like, I don't care who you vote for or how you get involved as long as you vote and as long as you get involved. Um, that's kind of the spirit on this. Like we're just trying to help people understand more at a, at a time where we really think it's super important for you all to understand how your government works. Um, so on that note, like I left, like I said, I left my email and my cell phone in there. I'm working remotely, obviously. Um, so like my cell phone is the only one I got, but feel free to reach out or text. Um, and if you have ideas or feedback, like we love to get criticism and feedback for people who use it or people to say, Hey, it'd be cool if, if you built something like this. Um, it's something we're really into and something we're totally open to, so. Cool, well, great. Any other questions for Al? No? Okay, well, cool. Well, thank cool. you very much. We I, appreciate I also your... have, yeah, of course. I also have a small child, so I'm gonna go and tend to the small child. Yeah, yeah, uh, do that. Congratula <laughs> Congratulations you. to you, John. That is that is a small baby. I hope you're getting some sleep. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Thanks everybody, thank you for having Thanks. me. Thank you. All right. Um, so that's cool. So we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, post this link as 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 well as a tool for pe people to use, and um, hopefully it, you know grows and it grows and evolves and and you know finds. I think it's useful. I hope you guys do do too. Um, so next up, I want to introduce uh, Bill Coleman. With uh, he is the oh Bill. Why don't you introduce introduce yourself? That sounds good, John. Thank you. My name is Bill Coleman, and I'm a consultant to the Benton Institute uh, for Broadband and Society. They're located in Evanston. They're a nationally recognized group around public policy issues around broadband technology and digital inclusion. 
And they're partnering with the state of Illinois, the Office of Broadband, uh, to select uh, a dozen communities to work with across the state. And uh, um, so I'm the community coach for you guys. Uh, uh, for, you know, order me around and, and uh, squeeze as much service out of me as you can to help improve really broadband access, adoption, and use. So I'm just going to quickly share just a couple slides uh, for you because I just can't help it anymore with that. But uh, um, so <clears throat> uh, Illinois Connected Communities. There's, as I mentioned, 12 communities. There's a, a big uh, region, southwestern Illinois, uh, nine counties are working together on broadband and technology. Two Chicago neighborhoods, uh, yourselves and South Shore. And then you can see two cities. We have four school districts and three counties. So a wide variety of uh, situations and geography. And uh, uh, so working with all of them to try and figure out what uh, uh, what makes sense to work on in your community. <clears throat> 11 of the 12 got grants of about up to $15,000. Uh, you guys did not. And so, and the part of the reason was there was, uh, you weren't ready administratively to take free money from the state. They don't make it easy. Um, I think it probably cost $15,000 to fill out their paperwork, uh, except that you guys had volunteers do it. And, uh, but we're working on that, trying to get the uh, neighborhood some resources. But really the most value is in the uh, strategic planning assistance that we provide, and then the uh, ongoing assistance uh, through the process. Uh, really getting the 12 communities to come together as a cohort to look at these kind of activities. And so when I talk about this uh, access adoption and use, Access is really, and I'll go through them just real quickly for you, but the uh, access is really about broadband infrastructure and uh, is the service is adequate, how's customer service, how's pricing. You know, a lot of times we think of uh, broadband access as a rural thing that people live out in the countryside and don't get, have good access. But in many uh, inner city neighborhoods, they're using very old uh, telecommunications networks the cable company maybe isn't in all places in the neighborhood and uh, pricing is high. Right now, of course, in most communities where Comcast is, they're essentially a monopoly. AT&T has really abandoned the idea of uh, delivering uh, DSL service over their copper network. As a matter of fact, they just announced in the last week or so that your house may have uh, AT&T DSL service right now, but if you would move and sell your house or move out of your apartment, um, AT&T is not gonna hook up that next person to the uh, copper lines. So they're just kind of saying, we're done with it. And they put fiber in some places and they're gonna maintain that, but the old copper lines are just would rather sell you sell you a, a cellular data plan for your phone and have you use that. So we work with communities then to figure out what is our situation and how do we get that improved? And so that's uh, certainly a, a critical issue in many places, both urban, suburban, and rural. And then, but adoption is really a critical piece. What percentage of people actually have internet services in their homes and can make good use of it? And we all know, you know, neighborhood associations used to get together, drink coffee, have some cookies. Now here, neighborhood associations are meeting online, just as schools are, just as business people are, people working from home. And so um, how do we make sure that everyone has a, a device, knows how to use it, and a connection to the network? And so they're for uh, neighborhoods that have uh, lower income people, older adults, we're working on strategies to um, uh, increase that. And whether that's to get more people using Comcast Internet Essentials, or whether it's to find dollars or other resources, you know, through the school district for kids or for telehealth programs, maybe for older adults, how do we, uh, increase the value of that connection so that there's people say, well, that's worth $30 because now I don't have to 
take a cab to the doctor, I can just uh, meet them online and from the comfort of my home. And when you think about that, then that's a pretty good, you know, a cab ride can probably be $30 and uh, there's a single use time limited thing for that. And so how do we increase the value uh, through training and, uh, and, and, uh, and so on? And then finally, this idea of use is really about sophistication of use. So in that adoption side, sometimes you're teaching people how to turn on a computer or to send an email, but we're also thinking now in this use about small business, how do they make better use of technology to maintain their customer base in the neighborhood? You know, we had one up in uh, 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 Rockford, uh, one of the gentlemen was saying, well, uh, I found out we need to do a lot more of this because only one local pizza place could you order online and get it delivered. You know, all the big pizza places, you know, the cardboard ones, they, uh, you know, they have all their online and all their apps and so on, but the local companies don't necessarily have that. And so how do you boost that so they can really uh, remain competitive? And so we've uh, both awareness, affordability, skills, uh, for all kinds of users, uh, uh, we're going to work on that. And then some of it's just an attitudinal thing. Some people, oh, I could never do video conferencing, but look at the 30 people now on this call today from your neighborhood who six months ago, probably 28 of them had never been on a, a video call. So uh, we do adapt, we do learn, and we uh, can make the changes. So this program is over the next several months, we're creating a plan and we had a good meeting the other day uh, to kind of really put the focus on the adoption side. And uh, 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 so that is uh, something that's really important for your neighborhood, how to make sure everyone can connect. And that, but we may run into that sophistication of use a little farther on. This program goes really through the end of May into June and so it's just a matter of what your neighborhood can really uh, bite off and prioritize and decide to work on in conjunction with your schools and if your library and any healthcare providers and senior organizations and trying to get a good linkage between a lot of these different groups kind of on a focus of technology uh, use. So that's, uh, that's our program and you've got a good committee uh, working on this and there, more is always better. The more uh, uh, hands, the more feet, uh, uh, the more uh, the more you can accomplish. Great, great. well thanks Bill. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Bill about, about the pro 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 program itself before we kind of delve into uh, what we as a community are looking for in terms of feedback and stuff like that? Liz. Liz has got her hand up. Please. Sorry. Well, I was curious um, what you're finding in terms of, uh, like, I know our community, but acro across the different ones about um, sort of language access and how that plays out too, right? Because in McKinley Park, um, uh, we have a lot, a lot of the residents are not English as a first language. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, um, you know, that's a whole um, thing in, of, in and of itself. I've, I've just spent the past week actually helping some neighbors get their sort of Comcast essentials set up because um, they were having a hard time navigating it um, in Spanish, so. Yeah, and that's, um, um, that is uh, something that's of concern in some of our communities. Uh, but throughout the Chicago land area, I would say certainly, and then in a couple of the more rural areas where they have more food processing and new immigrants who have uh, moved into the rural areas. And so that is a, um, is a concern. And it's a challenge, you know, when you think of a company like Comcast, they must have 25, 30 million people who don't speak English who are their customers. And that if it's for them, a large company to uh, to try and put things online in uh, multiple languages. You know, it's a challenge for the school districts and uh, healthcare providers as well. So that the first getting, um, we've had people uh, talking about there's, you know, where there may be even be, you know, school kids or uh, families that, you know, they just don't want to make a phone call to anyone and give them their phone number and their name and everything because of status questions and, 
And so that's a real challenge is how do you help uh, uh, that, those kind of families? And then, you know, people have been here maybe a long time, but still don't have the English skills to, uh, to really navigate those kind of things. And just as your own organization, the neighborhood association, how do you guys, and I'd ask that, how do you guys uh, uh, communicate? Do you use, use your, do you have information in multiple languages on your website or your meeting minutes or? We, we tried, we tried to do the three big language, you know, three main languages, uh, English and Spanish. And then we try our best to do uh, Chinese. Um, and that's usually for like, you know, a lot of the bigger meetings, like for the, for our CMAP meeting, we, we, we always do that. Um, and any sort of big topics, we, we try to at least hit those three. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Google has translation things, which are not bad, but can be pretty bad, you know, have some glaring issues with them, but can make a pretty good effort. In my youth, I was a, a VISTA volunteer in Oklahoma City, and the neighborhood I worked in had a lot of Spanish-speaking people. So we had a neighborhood resident who would do that translation of our newsletter, which was really uh, appreciated, I know, by the, by the residents. So yeah. that's a great consideration. You know, if you think about who's not connected, it's older and poor and people who are non-English speakers. Mm -hmm. you know, so those are real targets that, as we think about the adoption strategy for McKinley Park, uh, things we should take into account. And, whether we can find other resources, uh, uh, other organizations that, uh, that support uh, non-English speakers and bring them into your team, maybe to do the translation or to just give advice on how to you know, roll out programs for adoption, you know, that would be my suggestions. Great. Any other questions for Bill before we turn it over to Justin? How'd I do, Justin? You did awesome. Bill, thank you so much for like participating, taking your evening to join us. Um, Bill's an awesome resource and leader for this whole project. And actually the whole Benton Institute and, and, and uh, level of, of state support we're getting for this is fantastic. They're leveraging a bunch of great expertise and resources into this project um, that's really gonna help us succeed. Um, I wanted to take a couple, so thank you so much, Bill, and thank you for joining us. Um, I wanted to take a couple minutes to provide just a little bit of information on what we're doing as a council within this program, a little bit of background, and then I'd like to, you know, kind of demo an online resource area we've got set up. Uh, <clears throat> shouldn't make, take more than a couple minutes. Um, to manage our project, we are uh, building a steering committee, an all-volunteer steering committee, which involves uh, members of the community, stakeholders in the community who come together and then uh, basically we'll have meetings online once a month, uh, right now targeted for 4 p.m. on the first Wednesdays. And then there'll also be project and program work, uh, maybe a couple hours per month per steering committee member, you know, moving forward as we decide what we wanna do in this first year to execute on this project. Um, as Bill mentioned, the this program runs until May or runs, you know, in or into May. Uh, this is the first phase of an ongoing series of grant opportunities and project opportunities through Illinois Connected Communities. And depending on what we discover this first year, we may decide to pursue additional opportunities. In fact, the state of Illinois just announced the notice of funding opportunity for the second phase. And so, you know, for example, if we use this first year as a community to kind of figure out what we want to do and what the priorities are and what we need to accomplish, we can conceivably apply for grant money for next year. And I think there's a total of four years or something like that to actually give us funding to execute these things. So it's a really exciting opportunity. You know, Bill mentioned that we didn't get the money this first time, you know, but what we're doing, you know, we're all volunteer group and we'll be able to succeed, you know, through our volunteer labor anyway. Um, that was just because we're a young organization as a development council and you have to jump through all of these hoops to get through federal funding. This is actually our first federal program, our first federally funded program. And, uh, you know, John, and John worked really hard to get across all the T's and dot the I's. So I think we're now fully set and qualified to, you know, go toward these other opportunities. 
Um, you know, our current status on the project, uh, Bill mentioned we had a steering committee meeting earlier this month. Uh, Benton Institute and Bill host these things. It was really great. We had several members participate and we kind of talked about the vision we want to establish or started to talk about that. One of the things that was identified was the many low income and undocumented students and families in this neighborhood who may need help getting access and then using that access. So that was kind of an emerging theme. Um, and I think that we're gonna follow through with honing this down and coming up with an action plan. I think, Bill, you guys still owe us some notes on that meeting. So that's gonna be forthcoming and then that's gonna inform you know, what we're doing. Um, to support the Development Council's implementation of this project, we built a, uh, a kind of a resource website at mckinleypark.org. And I'm gonna share this link in the chat right now. And then I'm also gonna share my screen so that I can kind of demo this to folks. Um, and let me find the right screen to share. Okay. Can everybody see my screen or can I get a thumb? It's looking good, you can see the mckinleypark.org homepage. Thank you, okay, great. So uh, the basic idea is this is sort of like one-stop shopping for project information um, and that it's also private so that committee members can participate, they can log in, we can do our stuff. It's not visible to the public, but it's kind of all in one spot. There is a recruiting element to this from the standpoint of, uh, if you click here to learn more and volunteer, you can get a little bit of information and then you can actually sign up for an account. Um, now I, you know, we review and, and approve these accounts so not just anybody can get in, but this is a real easy way to sign up and participate to volunteer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and log in on my account. If you'll bear with me for just one moment so I can show you what we've got on the site. I'm logging in on my account, which is basically the same. Hey, Servan, you got your uh, photo updated. Okay, so first of all, about this website, uh, you know, you can see it's very plain. Uh, we didn't focus on design, we just, worried about functionality. Um, that can change, of course, and we can tweak things moving forward. It's also under development, so we'll continue to improve and make things better as we move forward. This homepage shows some of the most recent updates on the website, so kind of like what our members have done. So you can see Servan uh, just uploaded his uh, profile picture, you know, so we've you can make updates to your own profiles and manage your own profiles, things like that. Um, Clicking into the Illinois Connected Communities area leads to the main kind of spot for information, our central spot for information about the project. There's a little wall area for announcements. Um, I wanna point out our events list. I've put all of our upcoming events for the project, you know, as scheduled in here, um, including our once a month uh, steering committee meeting, which is gonna be, gonna be on the first Fridays. You can also see in November on the 12th, we have our ICC community cohort meeting. That's a member, that's an opportunity for all of our steering committee members to join in and meet people statewide uh, in the cohort. Um, and, you know, there are features to sign up and, uh, uh, you know, note your attendance or note that you plan to attend. Um, there's also a forums area integrated with this that's accessible both here in this, you know, kind of area. And also there's a link at the top. This just shows, you know, I figured this will be an easy way for us to share messages within this resource site, you know, just about what we're doing. We'll probably have different topics and different uh, uh, projects we're working on or whatever we need to discuss uh, as, a, uh, as a team. Um, and then I also wanted to show there's a spot to upload and share files uh, for the project. In particular, I wanted to show the committee charter for Illinois Connected Communities. Um, the McKinley Park Development Council, you know, over a year ago voted to use kind of a committee charter structure to manage our projects. And the Illinois Connected Communities project is the first time we're doing this. And so we're putting it in something called the Communi Community Communications Access and Literacy Committee. So just FYI for members, that's kind of how we're managing some of our operations. Um, and then, you know, I'll click on the team, you know, the team page. Basically, this is everybody who signed up, who's got an account, uh, you know, their contact information, their status, you know, who they're with, uh, kind of one-stop shop where you can see everybody who's involved. And then also there's a resources page 
where uh, you know, I've got some project resources and our project organizations listed. Uh, the project resources, the Illinois Connected Communities member website. These folks just launched this website, uh, which I've linked up in that resources area. So this has all of their meetings and uh, you know, uh, videos, other documents, other sorts of resources. Um, and then up here are some articles just on updates, including like the notice of funding opportunity and then a link to that sort of stuff. Um, I will point out that you know any member can come in here and click new to add a resource. You can add a new event. It's all set up to be interactive so that people can participate and communicate. So it's just kind of like a little demonstration of the website that we have set thus far. Uh, I've sent out invites and we've been onboarding a bunch of folks to get involved in the steering committee. Involvement can be as you know, like kind of individual representatives of groups or if groups want to kind of put together a little team uh, like we got a little team from the 12th Ward here, Liliana and Samira and uh, Alden Cardenas, you know, have access. Um, and, you know, that's another way that an organization can participate too, to share the share the lifting. And uh, let me see, I think that's kind of hitting everything that I wanted to cover on the demo. Um, anyone who wants to sign up or has any questions can just go to McKinleyPark.org. You can also get in touch with me at Justin Kerr at McKinleyPark.news. Um, you know, anyone and anyone who has any questions, you know, type it in the chat. I don't know if we need to take, and I guess if somebody has any questions, we can take them. Yeah, uh, we got a couple minutes. Anyone have any questions for Justin? I know we said that if, you know, if, if you guys are interested in, in participating, this, this is a great project. Uh, we're looking for you know, 12 to, I think we said up to 24 people to participate in, in the steering committee. So the more voices we have on this, the better. Um, it, it'll help us give a nice rounded out uh, project and, 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 and final final delivery here. So um, hopefully this brings us a little step closer to something really, really good for the neighborhood. And, and like Justin said, you know, our, our, our main target uh, for this project is to improve access and uh, yeah, proof access for those individuals, uh, specifically, uh, you know, un undocumented students in for our, what, what do we have, five or six schools in the neighborhood, right? Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's really our, our, our goal here is to help improve access and, and internet literacy for, for, for them. So, yeah, I think the schools are going to be a big part of it. Uh, by the way, you know, we've reached out to everybody. I'm still trying to break through to Namaste and Everett. So if anybody's got contact information there and they want to get involved then pass them along. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. If there are no questions for Justin, I appreciate it. You know, like you said, McKinleypark.org is where, is where, you, where, you, where you want to go. And we'll, we'll, link, we'll link to that in the, in the chat and we'll also on our um, other things like Facebook and stuff like that. All right. Um, so good. Me... Thanks everyone. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. All right, um, next thing, uh, the Alderman last Wednesday had a, had a community meeting for four different zoning changes in the neighborhood. One at 3473 South Archer, 3595 South Archer, 3798 Southwestern and 3900 Southwestern. Um, I believe Liliana is here from the Alderman's office. Liliana, if you wanna take a few minutes, but I believe there's a comment period that closes to, to tonight, right? about that, about those four things? That's correct, yes. Um, we're, we're still taking comments um, throughout the evening, of course. Um, and uh, we're compiling those comments, um, kind of sorting them out, if you will, and then we'll make those available um, so everyone can take a look. Um, we're always, you know, we wanna encourage people to continue to, um, to think things through and, and continue to submit the comments. And of course, um, if MPDC, um, uh, you know, collectively we'll submit anything. Um, that's always wonderful. Um, you know, because of the pandemic, um, we, we, there was a little bit of a lull. We didn't hear from developers. We had, um, you know, we didn't hear from anyone really for some time. And then all of a sudden in the last, you know, month or so, um, all of these proposals came, came, um, about. So we didn't really have a chance to kind of you know, sit down and, and kind of flush them out. And we just wanted to have a community meeting because it had been so long since we had um, connected with everyone. Um, it was a it was a loaded agenda, but I think, you know, we got through everything, um, thankfully. 
So thank you all for, for participating. Um, and since then, we've gotten other other folks, um, you know, reach out to us and tell us that, you know, they're also interested in having conversations about different different sites. So, so meetings like this will happen um, again, uh, very, very soon, I think. And I think a lot of the projects also, you know, these are big, bigger developments, some of these, of course, um, very complex, like the, the TOD. Um, I think, you know, some of these projects entail a lot of um, uh, kind of rounds of, of input and revisions and, um, you know, we want to touch base with DPD because they just put, put out this um, ETOG policy framework that's still out for comment. So we want to circle back with them, you know, get those folks that are experts on the matter um, to weigh in on it, uh, to, you know, come down to the community and, and look at the site and kind of offer their, their suggestions, if you will. Um, so this is an initial conversation, you know, I, what, what we don't want is for people to understand or to think that, you know, these are, you know, these have been sitting in the queue for some time. Um, they have not. And again, we wanted to put these out there um, as soon as possible. So again, we appreciate everyone you know, that submitted comments. Um, and the plan is, of course, to kind of take a look at those, review those internally, have internal discussions, and then, of course, come back out and let people know um, there's going to be a second meeting for some of these. Um, if we've, you know, gone out to the developer and let them know. Um, this is what the community, uh, you know, uh, these, this is what the community thought about your proposal or whatnot, and then um, see what they come back with. You know, there's there's some consistency in some of the comments, so we'll we'll make sure to you know put that out. Great. And then yeah. I, I think you mentioned at the meeting you you were going to share those comments as as well. Are, are you going to share those through your website? Are you going to share those through yeah. email? Yeah. Um, so what we're doing now, and Samira is on. I think she's on the line. She's helping just kind of. Uh, you know, kind of sort those out, if you will. And um, so we'll put them on the website and they'll be up tomorrow. And then also, of course, make them available on social media and whatnot. And we'll probably send an e-blast too. Um, we want to encourage people to, to sign up for those um, newsletters and e-blasts since we, we are communicating through those, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess, outlets as well. Great. Are there any... Yeah, so we, we want more, of course, um, encouraging folks to, to to still call and you know um we're not moving on anything very quickly i think there's still a lot of conversations to uh, to be had um you know it's it's a tricky time right now and we're going into these holidays so um you know there's there's no reason you know uh to really rush i know that the the site on archer and western um that one might be a little more more time sensitive considering um I think there's a, a lease with the Walgreens and Juan, you might be on the line with me, but um, anywho, with that, I think that we're, we're going to, to talk that through a little bit more because it's a bigger uh, development. And I know that the investors or the, the developers, um, we owed them a conversation, um, you know, very, very soon, if you will, so that we can kind of flush out some of the, the traffic study questions and things like that, that are going to be a little more um, time uh, you know, sensitive, if you will. Okay, great. Any questions for Liliana? I don't think so. I got, I have one more question. You mentioned um, there were some other things coming down the pipe. Are you, um, are you able to tell us how many there are or is it still up in the air? Is that, is that changing? Um. You know what? I, it's been such a long day with budget. Um, I know that we saw something um, come through for uh, there was a proposal for something on um, on Ashland that came by that was interested in residential, and I think that the alderman's initial thoughts was keeping that um, a commercial, for example. There's a lot of different things that come in, not really flushed out, if you will. You know, sometimes people just you know send out emails just to put feelers out and say, you know, what is the temperature? Is this something that I should even, you know, move along with, you know, renderings and engaging architects and, and going through that whole process, um, you know, takes some time and, and some investment. So um, as far as others that are kind of, you know, ready to be uh, put out to the community, I can't think of anything um, right now. I know that the affordable housing um, development on, on Pershing is something that, you know, is still, alive, if you will, um, the alderman is really, really interested in still um, keeping that alive. Um, you know, he's looking for other means, you know, there's a lot of conversation about what the future of, of that CMD will look like. 
Um, so there's a lot of that that's still in conversation. And I think that the community is really interested in getting a status update on that project particularly. And I didn't want to um, go into that because it was such a loaded agenda and that's a massive undertaking. Um, so I think we can come back out um, hopefully with an update on that project very soon. Um, there was some other uh, interest uh, in another parcel there um, on Pershing. Um, and, you know, obviously there's so many um, buildings there, but there was another, there was, there was some interest in another uh, parcel. I can't recall exactly the address. Um, and the idea is to touch base with MPDC, you know, ahead of this. I think we agreed to that. Um, we weren't able to, to touch base. We just kind of wanted to get this out there and have this community meeting because it had been so long. But, but we hope to do that. And I think we had committed to doing that um, before going out to the community. Um, so I think we have a conversation uh, pending with, with the, uh, the development council. I think a lot of the times we, we should also, or you know, we should also, I should say, visit um, the draft plan and, and take a look at what was you know, within that plan so that we can continue the conversation on, on the overall vision, because you know, we work really hard on that plan, right? Um, and yeah. there's, oh, yeah. there's components of um, TOD and, you know, um, traffic management and a whole host of other things. And we, because it's been such a tricky time, the circumstances and whatnot. And I know that um, even as a council, you guys, we haven't, hadn't met in some time. So I think it's really important for us to kind of bring that draft plan up, take a look at it, really understand how uh, we're aligning um, some of these proposals with, with that overall vision. Um, there's, you know, there was that other uh, property there in Pershing, um, that mixed, that mixed uh, use uh, property that, you know, had been under construction for some time. You know, um, I think that they were looking for a couple of different um, investors, if you will, or had some folks uh, kind of in the queue. And the pandemic has really, really changed that landscape, you know, um, in that retail kind of world. So, um, we, you know, we want to get an, an update on that as well. You guys remember, I think, um, the owner uh, Aberdeen Development had came out to you all for some time. So, you know, checking in with them and seeing, you know, what's the status there? Um, you know, how's that project going? So I think there's, there's still a lot to, a lot of conversations to be had. Um, I know that also the dollar store, um, that was something that came up um, as well. Um, that was zoned appropriately, for example. And, um, you know, our office wasn't involved because of the, you know, proximity to the other dollar store wasn't something that, you know, our, our, our office was, was too hot on. There is a huge opportunity for that, um, for a different type of development there at that site. So, um, you know, there's still a lot of conversations to be had in short, and we're trying to figure out what's the best approach. Um, but we'll come back out to the community with some updates. And um, I think there's a, there's a lot of conversation to still be had. Um, we just wanted to get this off the ground to be honest. But yeah, I, I want to schedule something with you all in the Alderman so that we can touch base on a whole host of other things. Great. I look Appreciate forward to that. It. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, are there any, are there any other questions for Liliana? Okay. Uh, I think that's it. I, I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, come on and talk to us and uh, give us an update. And, and like, and like she said, you know, the comments period goes through tonight. So I believe uh, Liz dropped the link in the chat here. So if you guys want to look at the, that, there's some renderings and some descriptions of the project. Um, feel free to feel free to comment and, and you know you know let them know what you think about uh, them. You know, um, you know regardless of whether it's good or you know bad or you know whatever you guys think, uh, there you know comments are that's what comments are for, right? Yes. All right. Um, so moving on to the last thing here, just very quickly. Um, so we have um, it's our annual call for board nominations. Uh, we've got some open spots. Um, there are, I'm gonna share this thing here. Um, there are four open positions on our board of 12 and as well as two current members of re-election. Those current members are myself and Justin. Um, so uh, if, if you guys want to, if anybody, if you or you know anybody that uh, wants to be, you know, be a part of the board, and you know be you know boots on the ground kind of thing and, and kind of you know be really in, in, involved in uh the neighborhood as far as de you know de development goes and kind of just do doing overall good good things for the neighborhood we encourage you to um submit your name 
a little bio, kind of why you want to do it. Um, there are a couple requirements uh, per our bylaws. So um, you uh, just going to kind of go through through here. Um, you must be a resident or business owner that's headquartered in McKinley Park neighborhood. Um, you can't hold, be running for, or work for a political or judicial office. Um, I think most importantly, you have a desire to pay it forward and you use your knowledge and your skills to positively impact the neighborhood for the, for the betterment of its residents. Um, if you have prior board experience, community organization experience, entrepreneurial experience, it's a plus, but it is, is not required. Um, I know I had, I had none of those things, um, but uh, I, we're, you know, we have a pretty good uh, group currently and uh, you know, we're more than happy to share our knowledge and experience and kind of help you along if, 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 if you really want to dive in head first here. Um, the commitment does, it is, it is a volunteer, so it is not paid, uh, but it does involve attending uh, meetings such as this one, but also an, a, a separate board meeting where we just you know, talk about you know, upcoming projects and budgets and you know, upcoming meetings, stuff like that. Uh, it's a monthly, it's a monthly thing. Uh, you should be, you should be willing to be responsible for at least one other area. So either as an officer, so president, vice president, uh, treasurer and secretary are the four officers or um, be willing to lead a project or have some kind of oversight role. Um, and then lastly, uh, as a board member, you should participate solely as yourself and not uh, in the interest of other um, outside businesses, organizations, or groups. Um, so that's that's the general gist of kind of what's what, what's what's required. Um, we'll take uh, nominations over the, over this next month, and then we'll have elections in November. Normally, we do elections uh, just by kind of paper voting whoever's at at that meeting. But given that we're online, we're still trying to work out the kinks and you know try not to. Uh, you know, which being Chicago, Chicago, we're trying to not to have people vote early or vote often. Um, so so uh, once we once we figure that out, we'll we'll, we'll let you all know. Uh, but look forward to that. Um, like I said, if you have any interest in in being a board member, we're you know we're more than happy to have you. Uh, if you know anybody who think who you think would would be good but aren't here tonight. Um, you can either let, let them know to contact us or, you know, give us their name. We're more than happy to reach out and pester someone for you. Um, so are there any questions about that? Where do people contact us? Oh, um, right. Duh. Um, so you can either get in touch with, with us on our Facebook page, just McKinley Park Development Council, or um, on our uh, email, which is McKinley Park Development Council at gmail.com. Um, uh, I think we can, Liz, can you drop that in the, in the chat there? Just so people have, have, have it. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a long email, I know, but, uh, it's, the, it's, it's what we got currently. Um, so like I said, if, if, if you want to, uh, you know, email us or contact us on social media or find me in the park, I'm there every day, usually twice a day walking my dog. Uh, you can, you can, hunt, you can hunt me down uh, and, and just let me know. Uh, any other, any other questions? Comments, concerns? No? All right. Well, I th think that just about covers it for tonight. Um, we are going to target, like I said, a, a, no a November meeting. Um, we're going to try to get back on track. I know it's been, it's, I know it's been a little, a little while since we had our last meeting, but uh, we're going to try to get back, back on track and shoot for the 18th of, no of no November, you know, go going back to our usual third Wednesday of the month. Um, where we meet usually at seven o'clock, and you know, as of right now, it's it's on Zoom. So uh, unless that ch changes, we'll, we'll 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 let you guys know though. All right. If there are no further questions or comments, I, I thank you for the, your attention for the last hour. And you know, we uh, my my you know my 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 best wishes to you all and your families. And uh, uh, thank you for taking the time. Hey, John, I just want to uh, let the steering committee members know that I'll be reaching out by email or messaging um, to everybody to let them know what's going on for November, but plan on that first Wednesday at four o'clock for our meeting. If you can make it, if we need to tweak the timing for regular meetings. We do that, but uh, I'll be communicating. So Great. thanks. Thanks, Justin. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everybody for showing up. Yeah. Really, really helps us. We oh, appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Good night.